Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to integrate a quadratic function by completing the square. To complete this problem, we'll complete the square of the quadratic, then use trigonometric substitution to find the integral. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the integral of this quadratic function, which is the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. And without being given any direction about which method to use to evaluate this integral, we have to start looking at which methods are going to be a possibility. We know we can't just evaluate this integral as is because it's too complicated to evaluate it without manipulating it in some way. We can't use u substitution because we won't be able to get anything to cancel. We can't use integration by parts because we only have one function and we need two for integration by parts. Partial fractions is inappropriate because we're not dealing with a rational function. So those are our three go-tos. Since none of them are going to work, we need to look at some other options. One thing that we can try here is because we're given a square root and a quadratic function underneath the square root, we could consider trigonometric substitution. But as you may know with trigonometric substitution, underneath the square root sign here, we either need to have u squared minus a squared a squared minus u squared, or u squared plus a squared, where u is our variable x and a is a constant. They both need to be squares, and in order for us to get this quadratic function into that form, we would need to complete the square of this quadratic. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll, we'll go down that path and see if it pans out. So in order to complete the square, we have x squared plus 4x plus 5, we're going to set that equal to x squared, and then to complete the square, we'll take the coefficient on our x to the first term here, 4. We'll divide that by 2, and we get 2. And then we square our result, so we square that and we get 4, which means that 4 is what we're going to need to add to our quadratic function in order to complete the square. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then we can't just add 4 without altering the function, so we have to actually subtract 4 to compensate. If we add 4 and then subtract 4, we haven't changed the function at all. So this piece here is going to be separate. We added the 4 so that we can complete the square with the x squared plus 4x here. So what we have now when we simplify this side over here is the quantity x plus 2 squared and then 5 minus 4 is just 1 so plus 1. Now you can see we have a square here the square of the quantity x plus 2 and 1 is a square as well so this is actually going to work out really nicely with trigonometric substitution. Once we identify that we have a trigonometric substitution problem on our hands we're going to need to do uh, go through the setup steps for a trigonometric substitution problem. So let's go ahead and plug this value that we got by completing the square back into our square root and into our integral. So this is the problem that we're dealing with now and this is exactly the same as our original problem we've just completed the square. If we if we multiply this out x plus 2 squared and we simplified we would end up right back here. So we've just changed the format of our quadratic function. So now with trigonometric substitution we need to recognize that we have a trigonometric substitution problem in the form u squared plus a squared. Again, where u is our theoretically our variable x and a is a constant. Obviously 1 is a constant and u here we have as x plus 2. When we have this format, we know that we're going to be using tangent of theta for our trigonometric substitution problem. And we have a couple setup steps that we need to complete. The first one is that we need to find u equal to a times tangent of theta. And we already have u and a. We know that u is equal to x plus 2, and we know that a is equal to 1. And let's just go ahead and identify those right now. We have u equal to x plus 2, and we can just go ahead and call this here 1 squared, essentially, right? That's the same thing, which means that 1 will be a. So when we plug those values into u equals a tangent theta, we'll get x plus 2 equals 1 times tangent of theta, so we just get tangent of theta. Now we need to go ahead and solve this for x, so we'll get x equals tangent of theta minus 2, 
and we want to find the derivative of x here. So we get dx, we take the derivative of tangent of theta minus 2, and we get secant squared of theta 2, the negative 2 goes away, the derivative of any constant is just 0. So the derivative is secant squared of theta d theta. Our last step in the trigonometric substitution part of this problem is to set up a right triangle and label the sides of this triangle because we'll need this at the end of our problem. So if this here is the angle theta, what we know when we're dealing with this u squared plus a squared and tangent of theta is that the adjacent side of our angle here is a, so we just have one. The opposite side to the angle is u, so x plus two. And then the hypotenuse is of course the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared, and it's the square root of that, which is exactly what we had here, the square root of the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 1, or our original problem here, and we'll just write the original one, this is going to be the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. At this point, now that our trigonometric substitution setup is complete, we need to go ahead and make substitutions back into our integral, and then start working with simplifying the integral. So we're going to have the integral here of the square root we solved for x plus 2. We found that x plus 2 was equal to tangent of theta. So we're going to get tangent squared theta because we have this squared sign here. So it's going to become tangent squared theta plus 1 underneath the square root. And then remember that we also solved for dx. We found that dx was equal to secant squared theta d theta. So this will be times secant squared theta d theta. We know from the identity, the common identity, that tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So we can now substitute secant squared theta for tangent squared theta plus 1, secant squared theta d theta. When we take the square root of secant squared theta, we'll just get secant of theta. And when we multiply that by secant squared theta, we'll get secant cubed theta d theta. At this point though, in order to go any further, because we can't integrate or we don't know off the top of our head how to integrate secant cubed theta d theta as it is, we want to keep it separately as secant of theta times secant squared of theta d theta and then use integration by parts to evaluate this integral. So using integration by parts, we'll set u equal to secant of theta, we'll set dv equal to secant squared of theta d theta. Then we'll take the derivative of u to get du. The derivative of secant of theta is secant times tangent. So secant tangent theta d theta. And we'll take the integral of dv to get v. And the integral or the antiderivative of secant squared theta is tangent of theta. So we'll get tangent of theta. Now we want to go ahead and plug these into our integration by parts formula, which remember will be u times v minus the integral of v times du. So we're going to set this formula here equal to our integral here. And while we're at it, we'll change this integral into secant cubed because we don't need this, the distinction anymore for u and v or, or for integration by parts. So we'll say secant cubed of theta, this integral that we had here, d theta, is equal to our integration by parts formula over here. So u times v, which is going to be secant of theta times tangent of theta, so secant tangent, minus the integral of v du, so tangent of theta times secant tangent. So we'll get secant theta times tangent squared of theta d theta. Now we can go ahead and use the identity that we talked about earlier. Remember up here we said that tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. Well, we have tangent squared theta here, which is the same thing as secant squared theta minus one, and that's a common identity. So we can simplify this right-hand side and say minus the integral of secant theta 
times secant squared theta minus 1 d theta. What we'll get here with this integral, this first part will stay the same, secant theta, tangent theta. But with the integral, if we distribute the secant theta across the secant squared theta minus 1, we'll get secant cubed of theta minus secant of theta. So if we separate those into two different integrals, we'll get minus the integral of secant cubed of theta d theta. Then we have a negative and another negative, so that's actually going to be plus the integral of secant of theta d theta. And now what we can do, since we have secant of theta, secant cubed of theta d theta over here, and the same thing on the left-hand side, we can actually add this one over onto the left-hand side, and we'll get 2 times the integral of secant cubed theta d theta is equal to secant of theta tangent of theta plus the integral of secant of theta, which actually is the natural log of the absolute value of secant of theta plus tangent of theta. Now, in order to solve for our original integral, secant cubed theta d theta, we just need to divide both sides by 2, and that'll give us the answer. So we have the integral of secant cubed of theta d theta is equal to everything we have over here on the right divided by 2. So we'll just call that 1 half secant theta tangent of theta plus 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So our last step is just to get this right hand side here in terms of x instead of in terms of theta. The way that we're going to do that is use the right triangle down here to make substitutions for secant of theta and tangent of theta. So what we'll get is 1 half secant of theta is going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So that's just this square root here divided by 1. So for secant of theta, we'll just get the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. For tangent of theta, we'll get the opposite side, x plus 2, divided by the adjacent side, 1. So it's just x plus 2. So we'll multiply by x plus 2. Then we'll say plus 1 half times natural log of the absolute value of, again, secant, which we know just to be the square root here, x squared plus 4x plus 5, plus tangent, which, again, we know just to be x plus 2, so plus x plus 2. And this is all in these absolute value brackets. So when we write our final answer, we'll say that the integral of the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5 dx is equal to 1 half times, we'll put this x plus 2 in front to make it cleaner, you don't like to have things after the square root, square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5 plus 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5 plus x plus 2. And of course, because we took an integral here, we don't want to forget to add our constant of integration, c, so we need to make sure we add that to the end for to account for any constant that may have been there. But that's it. That's our final answer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.